Hello everyone and happy National Signing Day here from Lafayette College. We have a plethora of young student athletes coming in to join the Lafayette College football class of 2023. Olivia Mulvihill here, joined alongside former player and Lafayette coach Mike Joseph. We have a lot of student athletes to talk about with head coach John Garrett coming up later. But first, Mike, a couple things about this class. What excites you the most about them? Well, just the overall athleticism of the class. Um, they brought in a, a number of kids at the skill positions, I think, that uh, can really can participate and compete early. And when you're talking about the Patriot League, you're talking about no redshirting, so you really need kids that are going to come in and compete on special teams run down on a kickoff, field punts, kickoffs, those type of things. And I think you've seen that from a lot of Lafayette freshmen, guys like Malik Cam and you know guys that can really contribute early. Um, so it's important, I think, for this class to do that. And I think uh, athletically, as you look at the class as a whole, um, from the quarterbacks to the wide receivers to the defensive backs and uh, the linebackers, they've gotten a lot of depth and they're going to get better, um, not only as backups, but on special teams. And they're going to have to contribute. Now, there will be 21 seniors graduating this May, including Jerry Poe, Kevin Zadovesky, CJ Meal, just to name a few. Who do you think will need to step up next season, whether it's a returning player or an incoming freshman? Um, well, I think, you know, as returning players up on the offensive line, you need a little bit more seasoning. Um, so guys like Teron Hampton, who's going to have to step in there for Kevin Zadovesky, and I love the way Joe Grunhofer played last year and uh, um, those type of kids. So you're, you're going to need, obviously, that offensive line to step up. So that's more of a maturity level. Um, but, uh, you know, guys on the outside, you know, like Nick Pearson, he's a terrific player. Quinn Revere had a phenomenal year as well. Uh, Steve Stilianos, the tight end, freshman tight end um, offensively. And obviously, Sean O'Malley is going to have to play, uh, you know, better. He's going to have to play better. He's going to have to obviously uh, push the ball downfield, have a higher completion percentage, get rid of the turnovers, things that uh, I know Coach Garrett doesn't want to do is turn the football over. Um, so that offensively, defensively, again, just turn that defensive line loose. You guys got, you know, Demetrius Breedlove and, and Malik Cam and, and guys that can really get after it. And uh, um, Harrison Greenhill was a great surprise for us as well. Major Jordan. And you got Yasir Thomas in the back back there with Trey, uh, Trey Jordan. So there's a lot of talent on this football team. So I think there's some kids that are stepping up and they're going to be excited to step up uh, with the departure. But leadership wise, they're going to have to pick up the slack where guys uh, like you said, guys like Zadovesky and CJ Emil and Jerry Poe, they led from the locker room out onto the field. Now that talent and leadership will need to come in strong as the Leopards have 12 games in the 2019 season with some key matchups against some Ivy League schools and a really nice homestand for the Leopards. Now out of those 12 games, which game really stands out to you the most as a key matchup? Um, well, obviously the last game of the season is big, but, and, <laughs> but the first game you know, against William & Mary. We haven't been to William & Mary in quite a while. Um, that is always going to be a good uh, a measuring stick for where we are. They're going to have great athletes uh, um, at all levels, at all three levels. So we're going to have to compete and we're going to have to do it down there. That, that game stands out to me. The first game of the season, Gary and I always talk about getting off to a good start. And then you have a couple of Ivy League foes as well uh, in, in Penn and Princeton. Uh, but that's during a homestand. So I like to see that homestand in there. And 12 games for the Leopards is something new. I don't think we've ever played 12 games. I think that's the maximum the NCAA allows you to play. Um, during the regular season. So they all stand out to me, but you've got to be ready for Patriot League play. And we've seen what happened. You know, it became, uh, besides Colgate last year, it was kind of a race for second place. And there was a lot of parity in the league. Now, there's a lot of great returners coming to this squad looking at next season, one of them being Malik Ham, Patriot League Rookie of the Year. Now, amongst Ham, what are some other returning players that you're most looking forward to see next season? Um, well, yeah, we kind of mentioned uh, up on the defensive line with Malik. Obviously, Malik, great player up for the Jerry Rice Award, really came on strong, nine and a half sacks. I mean, he's just a force, he's just a flat out force. And people are now going to have to game plan for him. But if you do that, you leave other players singled up, guys like Breedlove and Greenhill and uh, Ryan B Barnett. These are guys that can get to the quarterback. So I think a strength of this team is going to be that defensive line. You get another year under the belt for guys like Major Jordan. You get another year under the belt for Ryan Dickens, mm -hmm. for Christian Holler, some of these linebackers that I really, really like. And then in the secondary, Lafayette played a lot of freshmen. Uh, they played, uh, you know, Caleb Burr played a lot. Um, and Romeo Weichel played a lot. So there's guys back there that's got that experience. They're going to bring all that experience into spring football. But then offensively, Lafayette's uh, number one thing, got to put points on the board. Got to find a way to do that. They're going to have to find a way to continue to run the football. And, you know, if you watch football like we do all the time and you watch the Patriots, the running game is still alive and well in, in all the football, trickling down from the pros all the way down to high school. You've got to be able to run the football. You can't be one-dimensional. 
Now, Mike, you have plenty of experience here with Lafayette, playing for the Leopards and spending a lot of time coaching. Mm -hmm. What's a big piece of advice that you would give to this incoming class? Well, for the incoming class, just be yourself. You know, uh, do what you do well. Um, I would tell this class to, um, you know, make an impression early. The coaches are looking for you to compete early. Come in in good shape. Make sure that you're weight trained. Make sure that you're healthy. Make sure you don't make any mistakes over the summer. Nothing that can kind of throw a wrench into where you want to be when you step on the field for Coach Garrett in, the, in you know, August practice. So you want to make sure that you treat these next four or five months kind of like your mini camps. You want to make sure that you're healthy, number one. Make sure you're getting to the dance with everything that you can show. So, so do, do everything right from this point until you step on the campus of Lafayette because really they put a lot of stock in you and you put a lot of stock in yourself and as well as your parents and everything else. So these kids um, come in ready to compete, show the coaches what you can do, whether it's, you know, if you were starting running back and had 1,500 yards or starting, show the coaches that you can do more than just your position. Can I run down on a kickoff? Can I block a punt? Can I, can I return punts? Um, can I do the little things that are going to get me on the travel bus? Because again, with, with away games, you can't take everybody with you. So compete early, find a way to show the coaches that you're ready to play. All right, well, football seems to never end here on College Hill. Make sure to stick with us as we'll be joined alongside head coach John Garrett to break down the members of the incoming class. Welcome back, Leopard fans, to Signing Day Central. I'm Mike Joseph, color analyst for the uh, Lafayette Sports Network. And we're coming to you live right here from the Burger Varsity Football House in the locker room where everything happens. And uh, it's my great privilege to have uh, Coach John Garrett, the head coach of the Lafayette Leopards here. And John, an, an exciting day here on campus, and I'm sure for you and your staff, an exhausting one too. <laughs> well, it is. It's, uh, it's always a great day, signing day, to get a real good feel for who you're bringing into the program. Um, and we just have a good, real good collection of the right kind of guys who are smart, tough, dependable, and, and good athletes, and uh, we're really excited about today. Well, it's, uh, it, it's, it is an exciting day, John, and, and uh, to kind of use a, uh, an NFL term for your day, you're the GM. This is, this is your big day. You've got to bring these kids in, um, you know, and recruiting is, is the lifeblood, and we've seen it obviously everywhere. I mean, these are the kids that are going to play for you eventually. These are the kids that uh, help out recruiting. A lot of your players hosting other players, so it is the lifeblood of, uh, of Lafayette as well as every other team, and um, do you feel the same way? Because I think it, it all starts right here today. Well, it's always about players and, and putting them in the right position to play, and, and uh, those guys win games, and uh, we always want to bring in the best talent that we can uh, with the right fit that is uh, for Lafayette, because they also have to be good students. Mm -hmm. And so we tell our guys who are hosting them, and we tell them when they get here on campus on, on official visit weekends, we're looking for the right kind of guy who, who is smart, tough, dependable, uh, who competes on the field, but also in the classroom, and uh, just represents the program the right way. So. Uh, we believe that uh, this group that we brought in has uh, great football and personal character uh, and ultimately character and culture uh, combined with talent win football games. Yeah, that's that, and that is what it's all about. You've got to get the right people, the right citizens, the kids that are going to be uh, and act and do the right things up on campus. And we don't talk enough really about how academically prestigious the school is, number one, and how academically prestigious these kids are. I mean, they are phenomenal students. I mean, grade point average is above 4.0. Uh, incredible SAT scores. They do all the right things. They're good kids in the classroom. Uh, and you talk to everybody from their coaches to their, you know, uh, uh, their position coach, other players, other coaches that recruit them. I mean, you know, these kids have to go through a really a, a tough situation just to get in and get an official visit at Lafayette College. Well, we're very judicious in the process. Uh, you know, the, the student athlete has to come to campus. Uh, they, they need to see what they're investing in as well. Um, and uh, it's, uh, we believe it's all about relationships and we need to get to know the player, we need to get to know their parents, we need to get to know their coach, uh, and we, we evaluate everything from what they show on tape to, to how, how they carry themselves mm -hmm. on campus and then also how they interact with, with our players. Um, we get great information from them and our coaches uh, in the whole process of researching these kids and uh, uh, because it's very competitive. It's only yeah. 15 scholarships. There's only so many spots. Right. And uh, you take that across the country of all the, the candidates and all the great student athletes. Uh, you know, it, it is a competitive, competitive situation. And, uh, and quite an accomplishment to get one of these spots mm. at, uh, at Lafayette College. Absolutely. And uh, the, um, you know, you, I, I was really impressed the way your staff 
and yourself obviously showed a lot of patience with this class because you put together a good look a, a good bunch of kids early in that December early signing day which again is new um, but you got to be patient at this level and I thought you guys did a, a tremendous job of that and it shows here with the kids that we're going to show today I mean it really paid off for you to to be patient and then obviously understand the system and how it works well you had to adjust with the second signing day yeah. and uh, particularly at an FCS school uh, there is going to be that trickle-down effect from FBS schools where we want to be in on kids who are being recruited by those schools, uh, who are good students being recruited by FBS schools. And, and if they don't get a spot, they need a home. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make sure that we have space for them on our team. And you know, it's, it's been a good strategy for us. We've been able to get kids last year and this year that we really feel good about. And you had some great recruiting weekends, including just one just this past mm -hmm. weekend where you kind of cleaned up with a lot of kids and really did a nice job. Well, let's start. Let's uh, let's actually get into it. Let's start. Uh, today we're going to talk about just the kids, obviously, that have their paperwork in. I think we have seven on offense, seven on defense. We have one special teamer, uh, so a total of 15 kids that we're going to talk about this morning. There will be more, um, but let's get right to it. Let's talk about, obviously, we, we got a good chance to look at an offensive lineman you had in here. Let's run some tape on Alex Barshaba. Alex is an offensive lineman out of Staten Island. Big body, really can do it for you up front. Well, as you can see on the tape, he is a big guy that can move. He's powerful. It's <laughs> explosive. He's tough. He brings a mentality and a nastiness to his play that's, that's evident when you watch the tape. Uh, we, uh, uh, we first saw him at the Rutgers camp and did a really good job there. And uh, uh, he's really uh, a guy that is, loves football, and he trains, and he loves the weight room. And uh, when he showed up on campus, he looks the part and uh, is all about uh, Lafayette and he's all about uh, becoming part of our football program. Yeah, I, lo I love Alex. I wrote down just a large human being. I'm just a big man. I mean, great technique, too. A larger guy mm -hmm. like that sometimes can get away from the technique aspect and really just kind of lean on people and use his size. But great hand placement, mm -hmm. good foot placement, um, does a nice job with his flexibility, can get into a stance, can play you know, either the left or the right side for you. And he seems to be really well coached out of Staten Island. That is a big body. And you know, obviously, it all starts up front. So Alex is a great get. Yeah, he's a great addition to our offensive line. It really improved this past year. Um, let's uh, move right along here. We'll talk about Joey Gillette. And you know, if you watch Joey play football, wide receiver, pure receiver out there, runs great routes out of Strongsville, Ohio. Um, extremely explosive young man. He really is, and he's so versatile. Uh, he, he is productive as an outside receiver, as a slot receiver. Uh, they hand him the ball in the backfield. Uh, he plays wildcat quarterback. He returns punts. He gets <laughs> wide receiver screens, and, and, and he's just a real versatile player. There you see him at quarterback and yeah. just making people miss, and, 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 he's, and he's fast. He timed really well at the Northwestern Showcase Camp. Yep. Uh, and uh, he's come to campus and he just made a great impression uh, on us as, as far as his football and personal character. It comes from a great family in the great state of Ohio. So uh, he's a, a real good, versatile player that we think uh, can uh, take the ball and do it in a lot of ways for us. Right, and uh, as everybody talks about now, the yards after the catch, and we had a chance to watch Julian Edelman <laughs> in the, in the uh, uncoverable in the slot type thing and and we have a couple of those guys him he's going to be a nice addition along with him and Pearson and Quinn Revere I mean those are guys that can work the inside of the field for you and it's so important to own between the hash marks obviously and we're going to have some good wide receivers on the outside but these I mean those kids that can own the middle of the field can run good routes and really kind of get that separation and have that top end at the top of the route being able to separate and I see Joey being that type of kid. Yeah, well, those slot receivers and tight ends, that, those that work in between yeah. the numbers are our quarterback's best friend. And uh, <laughs> uh, those are the shorter, highly completed passes uh, that right. you want. And, and uh, if you get a guy that's really reliable and yeah. hard to cover in there and can separate, it's a, it's a great, valuable weapon yeah, for He's us. got great flat and uh, top end speed. So uh, Joey's a great get as well. Um, we're going to move on here to Jordan Hall. Jordan Hall is a wide receiver out of Zionsville High School. 6'2", 160, or 185, what I've noticed about Jordan, he's a, a pure playmaker, great straight line speed, and is intimidating on the field, a big kid. Well, he's a great combination of speed, athleticism, uh, he's strong, he's well built, uh, he makes plays at Zionsville uh, in a variety of ways, uh, uh, he, he's, he's hard to bring down, uh, and he's a polished route runner. Uh, he comes from a football family. His dad, Lee Hull, was a 
uh, wide receiver at Holy Cross, and right. he's been in at college and pro coaching, uh, and, and I know firsthand that Lee works with him, and this guy is a tireless uh, worker, and he's always working on his craft, yeah. and uh, super family, uh, just great character, uh, really got to know his mom and dad, and uh, he is a really good addition, and really a great profile Lafayette kid because right. uh, the, the, the classroom is important to him, and uh, really works hard on the field too. Well, those are the important things. I, I just had down good straight line speed, can separate. He's a big body, could be good for you in the red zone. And it doesn't help when your dad's a receiver coach. <laughs> your dad, you know, you get that, you pretty much get coached 24 hours a day and you and I both know that. And, uh, but great upside, I, I, the type of kid I think that's gonna help you and could even help you early on special teams and be a kid that can help you in the red zone and uh, give you some height on the outside. I think Jordan Hawley is a, is a great get for you guys really is he brings some playmaking ability and athleticism and speed which is a great combination and and a guy that i think is polished enough where yeah. he could come right in and make an impact uh, absolutely and we've got a number of those kids and and in the patriot league you have to be able to do that especially mm -hmm. at the skills we talked olivia and i talked a little bit about the offensive line where you got to mature a little bit you almost mm -hmm. need a red shirt year but we don't have the opportunity to do that so as a skill player we saw a lot of kids for you last year as freshmen get on the field and contribute mm -hmm. Uh, and, and you have to do that here in the Patriot League. Let's move on to a, a kicker here, Ryan O'Hara, six foot one, 190 pounds out of Red Bank Catholic. Again, an early get for you as well, and a position that uh, is a little bit, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of guys right there. Now with uh, Corden Brock, you got Bissell graduating. Uh, Ryan's gonna be a nice addition. Well, he, he is, because he's versatile. He, he can uh, kick field goals, he can kick off, he can punt. He's a really good athlete. He's a two-sport athlete. He's right. gonna play baseball here as well. Uh, and uh, uh, it comes from a great program. Red Bank Catholic is down uh, in Monmouth County where I'm from and have, have known about Red Bank Catholic for a long time. Mm -hmm. A long, uh, great football coach in Frank Edgerly. They won the state title this year mm -hmm. and they always generate uh, good players who play college football and I know they're coached the right way and, and uh, uh, Ryan's gonna be a real threat for us uh, in the kicking game. Uh, that can impact the game, which is, mm -hmm. which is great in all three phases. It's important to have a good athlete back there, whether he's going to punt or kick off, do those type of things, make tackles. He's just not an extra player on the field. And, and I think Ryan, obviously you said it, he's going to play baseball here. Mm -hmm. So he's a terrific athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be able to contribute. He's going to get an opportunity right away to kick. I mean, that's how kickers are. You get out there and, you know, obviously whoever's consistent, um, we've seen that and, and kickers that can do a lot of different things and be consistent like that. Uh, he's got an opportunity and like you said, a great athlete. So again, a good get and a need that you had to have. Yeah, it is with, with Bissell leaving. Uh, there's going to be competition there with, with him and, and Jeff, but uh, it'll be a good one. It'll be fun to watch. Good. Let's move on here to John Pacey. John is a quarterback that we spoke about back in December. Great athlete, six foot, 185 out of Huntington, New York. Comes from great pedigree as well. Does a lot of things right from that position. Yeah, he does. So he's real versatile. He's accurate. Uh, he's an anticipatory thrower. He gets the ball out. Uh, as you can see, he can make plays from the pocket. And he also uh, gets out of pocket and is a threat. And uh, his dad was a uh, starting quarterback at Indiana University and then uh, went on to play in pro football. So he's, he's well trained. He comes from a good program. Uh, and. Uh, uh, he, he's hard to tackle. He's a good athlete. He's a playmaker, uh, and uh, we're glad to have him in the program. Yeah, it's important to have somebody like John that, that can that do a lot of things. It's not the pocket passing, obviously, at the highest level is still very important, but to be able to extend plays, to escape, not everybody's not every blocking scheme's going to work. You got to be able to pick up protection, things like that. Work with your center, but he seems like a guy who's got a good pedigree, understands the game well, and got a good head on his shoulders, understands when to get rid of the ball, when to get out of the pocket, when to dump the ball off. He's got a lot of skills, and again, a kid's gonna come in here and compete, so that's a good one as well, John. John, and again, comes from good pedigree. Yeah, he, he adds depth to the position. It's gonna be real competitive this spring to see who emerges as the, as, as the starter, because uh, just like last year, it was very competitive. Sure. Uh, and uh, it certainly will be uh, this spring as well, and then come fall, the same thing with uh, the addition of John. Yeah, nice, nice get there. Let's move on to Christian Rollinson. Christian is a tight end, six foot two, 220 pounds, Ponte Vedro. I want to go to Ponte Vedro and play golf, let alone <laughs> play football, but six foot two, 220 pounds, extremely versatile, fits well into, I think, your scheme of what you do offensively. Yeah, well, Christian is, like I said, comes from a, a good program down, down there. He is versatile. He can play tight end. He can play fullback from the backfield. Uh, he's an aggressive blocker. 
Uh, he came to our camp. He showed some athleticism and speed to catch the ball down the field. Uh, so uh, with, the, with the graduation of Will Eisler, mm -hmm. we, we like to play with a couple tight ends on the field and also put that guy in the backfield as a fullback. And uh, Christian shows some versatility and some toughness uh, to play those roles. Uh, and so we're glad to have him. Yeah, and he catches the ball, like you said, well out of the backfield. He blocks well. So versatility, I mean, you can't find 6'2", 6'3", 225-pound guys that can do all that. A lot of times they're limited. They can do one thing. They can't do another. Maybe they can run a pattern here or there. They can play the outside linebacker. They can rush the pass. But this is a kid that, again, um, has a lot of versatility, like you said. It fits in well, I think, with your scheme. So, again, you're, you're recruiting towards kind of a target as to what you do offensively. Um, and again, comes out good fo oh, oh, Florida football. I mean, it's good football down there, and it's mm -hmm. very competitive. Yeah, well, he just adds to a good crop of tight ends and fullbacks that we have, and it'll be real, real, real competitive at that position. It is going to be, and you had a, a nice freshman last year step for you, a step up for you in Stiliano. So again, that's going to add a, you know, that uh, that factor as well. The tight, you can't have enough tight ends. You mm -hmm. just can't have enough those type kids, fullbacks. Let's move on here to Keegan Schumacher. Keegan, uh, terrific quarterback, six foot three. I just watched him play in an all-star game a couple weeks ago, 190 pounds out of Prosper, Texas. I love his escapability. He has great pocket presence and a really strong arm. Well, he's versatile. He's athletic. Uh, you can see there he just scored a 50-yard touchdown and nobody could mm -hmm. catch him. Uh, he extends plays. He he's, uh, can throw it from the pocket. Uh, he can throw it deep. Uh, he can throw it accurately. Uh, when we saw him throw live, he really showed a lot of versatility in his arm that he could throw it a lot of different ways on the run, going to his right, going to his left, stepping up, uh, under duress. Uh, and, uh, you know, just to have a really good athlete back there that's versatile. You can do a lot of things with a quarterback. Uh, and uh, the great thing about it is a lot of his production is right there in the pocket as well. Exactly. And you see, get a chance to see him do it outside the pocket as well as inside the pocket and you as a, an offensive guy you got to be able to move the pocket mm -hmm. a little bit sometimes whether it's short snaps whether it's a, you know a deep setback or you know play action or get him out of the pocket and you can see keegan can do all of those type of things and then has the strength in his arm to sit and be able to climb mm -hmm. the pocket on a third down and eight third down and nine down distances you want to stay out of but he has the ability to, to kind of press the ball down the field in those intermediate routes yeah and, and he's still young uh, physically he's going to mature and you know He's, he's 6'2", 185 right now, and, yeah. and uh, he's got a frame that uh, can easily be over 200 pounds. So he's going to be a big, strong, athletic kid mm -hmm. and add some great competition to the quarterback position. And I did a little research on it and found out that their school stepped up in class, whether it was last year or the year before, and he led them to a winning season, and they were extremely competitive moving up in class. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not moving up in class in a small state. You're moving up in class in Texas. So that is a really nice get and shows his competitiveness to compete at a higher level and obviously take his team and lead his team. Anytime you can get a quarterback from Texas at a program like Prosper, yeah. uh, it really means something that uh, he is playing at the highest level and uh, we're, we're really glad to have him. Yeah. And he's all in here at Lafayette, which is great. Let's move on to uh, another offensive lineman. We talked about Alex, Alex Barshaba. Let's talk about Nathan Slater here out of Hudson, Ohio, six foot three, 265 pounds. Very versatile athlete, nice and lean. I, I think he could play anywhere on the offensive line for you. Well, he is. He, he is that athletic, and he is versatile, and he's really smart, and he's tough. He came to our camp, he, really impressed with his football character and his effort and how he competed. That's what really caught our eye, uh, and uh, he's got good size. Like you said, he's versatile. Uh, there's evidence of him playing tackle. We think he can play inside and even even athletic enough to play center. And we just love his demeanor. We love his toughness. We love his relentlessness to compete and sustain blocks. And uh, he's the right kind of guy that's really going to bring a great attitude uh, to our football team. Yeah, and great flexibility there as well. You can see really well coached, understand schemes up front. And, uh, you know, in this league, there's so many different ways to obviously try to get to the quarterback. Kids have to, on the line of scrimmage. I mean, you're breaking the line, you're getting to the line of scrimmage you're late, you're changing the play, you're killing a play, you're changing the protection. These are all things that he has to understand. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being a guard or a center or, you know, he, he could play all the way across the offensive line. And uh, good flexibility to get in a left-handed stance, mm -hmm. which isn't easy as well. And, uh, uh, again, it's Ohio football. So, Nathan, a really nice get for you. Yeah, we love his versatility. We love his toughness. Uh, we love his demeanor. He is really smart, and I don't think there is going to be any problem with him 
uh, playing across the line mm -hmm. if we need them to, and uh, we're excited to have them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing we didn't talk about, uh, earlier in the week, two weeks, I think it was a week and a half ago, you had 27 kids on the honor roll, all Patriot League mm -hmm. honor roll. So we don't talk about that enough. And what I noticed was every kid that had, was on that honor roll um, came in and was and was had had a major wasn't undeclared. I mean, they they know what they want to do, whether it's economics, engineering, bio, whatever it is. I mean, you got 27 kids on the honor roll. That that's about one third of your team, and it's an amazing, amazing stat. And we don't push that enough. Well, it's important. We want smart guys in our <laughs> program uh, because uh, smart guys. Uh, do what they're supposed to do. They don't make many mistakes right. on the field, and, and more games are lost than they're won, mm -hmm. and uh, we believe that intelligence uh, and their ability to do well in the classroom carries over to football, and so we want those types of guys, and it's just yeah. part of what we believe in about bringing in the right kind of guys. Yeah, exactly, and we're going to talk, uh, finish up this uh, offensive session here with Julius Young. Julius 5'11", 165 pounds out of Episcopal High School uh, in Bel Air, Texas. Just, I mean, flat out. When I watched him, flat out burner, and he just eats up cushion, John. <laughs> just eats up cushion. Well, he's really athletic. He's really fast. He comes from a great uh, high school down in Houston. Uh, he's a teammate of Tejon Martins, who we, we got last year. In, right. And, uh, you know, that, that program produces really good student oh. athletes, and he's just <laughs> athletic. Uh, I saw him live in the spring practice okay. and uh, uh, just effortless, very flexible, uh, breakaway speed, hard to tackle, wow. um, really good hip flexibility, can stop on a dime, and uh, uh, he just tracks the ball really well. And uh, he, he's real versatile because of his athleticism and, and his speed. So it's going to be nice to add him as a threat to our offense. Yeah, I mean, the top, if you watch the top of the route, the way he accelerates and separates at the top of the route, and then obviously cracks the ball really well, kind of like a center fielder mm -hmm. type kid, but the speed is what does it, and the ability of him, like you said, stop on a dime. That one cut he made, bang, bang. I mean, he's just, the COD, the change of direction is incredible. Exciting to watch. He always seemed to be, when I watched this film, to be, you know, even the non-highlights I watched the game film, the best player on the field. I mean, and he just didn't play off. I mean, he does a lot of different things. And um, again, out of the same high school as Tejon Martin, who we're expecting big things out of as well. Um, so that had to help uh, there. But uh, Julius Young, just a, a, a really nice group of offensive kids. You have other kids as well that we can't talk about right now. But um, a nice group of offensive guys going to give you a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, opportunities calling, football, calling plays uh, for your quarterback. Well, we just continue to bring in athletic, fast, smart, tough mm -hmm. uh, players uh, who can make plays, and, and Julius is one of them. And he, mm -hmm. and he comes from great pedigree because his dad played at Oregon State. Oh, you uh, and, uh, and so we just, again, believe uh, combining the right kind of guy, football mm -hmm. character, uh, personal character, and athleticism, and, and speed always helps. Yeah, exactly. And we're, uh, we're going to take a short break right here. But when we come back again with Coach Garrett, head coach of the Lafayette Leopards, we're going to talk defense and see what kind of guys you got bringing in here defensively uh, to, uh, to really kind of get this day finished up. So we'll be back with the defensive recruits in just a minute. Welcome back, Leopard fans, to Signing Day Central. I'm Mike Joseph again for the Lafayette Sports Network, joined by head coach John Garrett of the Lafayette Leopards. And we're going to get into the defensive players. John, let's take one minute here just to kind of reflect back um, on a season that a little bit inconsistent, obviously mm -hmm. left some plays out there uh, in 2018. What were some of the things that you saw that you need to kind of get sewn up here in the spring moving into next year? Well, we just need to play more consistently. I think uh, we had some real good signature wins, particularly on the road, which right. is hard to do in the Patriot League. Uh, we, you know, that Bucknell uh, game was a great win for us, mm -hmm. and, and then Fordham was a great win, and then and then the Central Connecticut game was a great win, and and, and they all showed that we could win a lot of different ways. Right. We really threw it well against Central Connecticut, and then and then ran it on the road. Uh, but uh, we just need to be more more consistent. Uh, uh, offensively, uh, staying on the field, uh, generating more points, uh, generating more explosive plays. And, you know, those 
it we had to battle some injuries. A lot yep. of our a lot of our speed and explosive players were injured. You know, Nick Pearson was was out some, and mm -hmm. then Zadok Scott was out some, and right. and uh, uh, you know Tim Payne got hurt in the first game. So um, you know you always just have to adjust and uh, with uh, uh, the next man up mentality. Mm -hmm. And then defensively, we just need to be more consistent. We gave up uh, too many big plays, and then also we didn't generate as much as many turnovers Turnover, we did right. in year one, and, and that, that helps so much mm -hmm. um, uh, when uh, you can you can get the ball away, and that's the, the best way to stop offenses, and, and so those are the things that we need to uh, we need to do most most importantly this spring. Yeah, the plus minus ratio for turnover, it, it obviously just correlates and uh, correlates with every win you have. I mean, you got to be able to get short fields, you got to be able to turn the ball over. Uh, turn the offense over and then obviously be able to finish in the red zone and do those type of things and we had flashes of being explosive and, mm -hmm. and players open downfield and, and running backs being able to get out into the open and that comes again with a little bit more of a experience and maturity up front mm -hmm. Kevin Zazavetsky in and out of the lineup a little bit but I thought the other guys like Grunhofer and, and Teron Hampton played really well Marathi I mean there were guys uh, Barclay they're they're coming together that group and I thought that was one of the the groups that really improved from day one to the end of the season. I thought that offensive line really came together. No, no question about it. Was really pleased with their development. Uh, there's a there was a group that, other than Kevin, stayed relatively healthy, which was not the case in year one. Mm -hmm. uh, and these guys now have, a lot of them have two full seasons under the belt right. because a lot of them had to play a lot of football their freshman year, and now just completed their sophomore year. And this is an offensive line that that uh, gave up the fewest sta sacks of anyone mm -hmm. in the Patriot League yep. and the fewest TFLs of anyone in the Patriot League. So made great strides, great improvements, yeah. and uh, uh, building some confidence there with uh, how we ran the ball so well against Fordham and Bucknell right. and controlled the game, and then also how we, how we protected the passer as well. So uh, poised and ready for those guys to take another uh, step up as we continue to build this program and breakthrough in 2019. Yeah. Football, you know, we talk so much about this and that with football. It really comes down to, again, being able to run the football consistently and then being able to throw your play action off of that mm -hmm. and then take your shots downfield. It, it really makes a lot easier when you mm -hmm. keep your quarterback upright. He's, he can step up and climb the pocket, those type of things. And these are all things that we're working towards as well. So let's get to the defense right now. Let's talk about Deron Gilbert. And Deron is one of my favorite players in this class out of Brother Rice. We just graduated a, a nice uh, a Michigan player two years ago in Philip Parham. So, Deron Gilbert, what do you like about him? Well, he's he's big, strong, and fast uh, <laughs> from the safety position. He's versatile. He can he can play in the wow, in the deep that. middle as a free safety. He can uh, run the alley as a strong safety. Uh, he uh, he's athletic. He intercepts the ball. Uh, he defends the run. He's a good sound tackler. Uh, and he brings an aggressiveness and anticipation uh, that is really impressive. Uh, it comes from a great program yep. uh, and, and a super family and a really high character kid that loves football and works hard. Yeah, again, one of those kids that you just say, you know, he's got a great exceptional hips. Watch him open his hips and run right here. Great change of direction. Comes back, makes a play on a ball, but doesn't turn and look for the ball, gets to the receiver, and then he finds the football afterwards. I, the kid's a difference maker. Great hips, like I said. He always seems to be the best player on the field. He can do it all. Watch him right here. Again, makes a play across the middle. Again, on a player, on a, on a receiver coming from the opposite side. I mean, this he didn't really play. And this is good football. Brother Rice, good football. Well, they've been good for a long time, and it's a great league that they play in. And he brings a physicality and an ability to tackle mm -hmm. uh, that. Uh, uh, really is the essence of defense because right. uh, we you always need to be a good tackling team and the best defenses are it, it uh, they they just they bring an aggressiveness to it and then also a limit runs after catch and and long runs from scrimmage if you're a good tackling team and and he's a natural at it and I really like his physicality and his versatility mm -hmm. yeah he reminds me a little bit of a kind of a smaller version of Jerry Poe runs a little bit better mm -hmm. wears the same number as Jerry as well mm -hmm. and Jerry was a terrific player for us here, a four-year starter, and uh, um, that's a great get. I mean, he's, he, he will be, this is me, he will be an all-Patriot League defensive back. He just has a great nose for the football. He goes up, he high points the ball. He does everything right defensively, comes downhill, can fill, like you said, in the alley and play. Those kids are hard to find. A lot of mm -hmm. times you find a kid that can fill the alley and play down in the box, but can't do it from the intermediate level to the deep level. And a guy like Duran, he, he can do it all. Well, he's, he's, he's very talented physically, and, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, 
uh, was being recruited by bigger schools, yep. and uh, we were able to uh, convince him that Lafayette's a great place for him. He can mm -hmm. play early and get a great education, and uh, he's really going to help us. He's really, really going to help you. Let's move on here, and you're going to have to pronounce it. Blamessi Mighty, is it? Six foot, 200 pounds out Mayte. of Discovery. Mayte. Blamassi Mayte. Discovery uh, High School and Georgia, six foot one, 220 pounds, runs extremely well, and he will knock you out. <laughs> well, he, he does a lot of things on tape, you know, so uh, he can run to the football, he makes plays sideline to sideline. He, he's aggressive at the point of attack, taking on and shedding blocks. He's a very effective blitzer. He, he can get up in the A gap and get to the quarterback fast. <laughs> he, he accelerates when he hits people, and uh, he has. Uh, uh, Great physical build. He's fast. He's flexible. He's explosive. Uh, production in every aspect you want a linebacker to have. Defending the run inside wow. the box, uh, shedding blocks, uh, uh, pursuing, making tackles from sideline to sideline, making plays on the ball, uh, and really just a physical presence as a blitzer as well. So yeah. he's a versatile kid that comes from a great family mm -hmm. and he's a great addition to our program. And, and if anybody knows anything about high school football nowadays, Georgia is such a fertile ground. I mean, that mm -hmm. entire area outside Atlanta, all the suburbs, I mean, this is a kid that can run, can do a lot of different things, go sideline to sideline, but has great instincts inside. Like you said, ways, there are certain guys at linebacker that know how to get off a block and get to the football or beat a block with a step here, go under a block. If you go under, make sure you make the play. But they're, they're, he just seems to have great instincts and a nose for the football. There's other guys that get blocked mm -hmm. and they just can't get off of blocks. But uh, a guy like, uh, like him is, is, is a great get. And it seems like linebacker was somewhat of a, a target for you guys this year. Well, we needed to, to reload there uh, right. because we had some graduation, yep. not only with our starters, but with our depth. So we made it important to bring in um, four linebackers, and, and we're really pleased with the group. And, and Blamasi's a, a really good player because he had a great combination of athleticism and physicality mm -hmm. that uh, you really look for in a linebacker. Yeah, and I saw his picture here with his, with, with, uh, his family and yourself in the locker room here. Big smile on his face. <laughs> Big number eight right there. Going to be a great get and, and just a terrific kid. Got all his paperwork in. Let's move on to another linebacker as we're on the subject. Marco Alivas, uh, linebacker, 6'2", 210 pounds out of Fossil Ridge. Another kid out of Texas, just long and athletic and just covers ground. He's a terrific linebacker, very impressive on film. Yeah, well, he brings speed and athleticism and an explosiveness to the position that we really like. Caught our eye immediately when we saw the tape uh, from a good program. Coach Baccarini does a great job um, as a longtime high school football coach at Fossil Ridge. Uh, it's, a, it's a high school uh, that I'm familiar with because it was right near the area uh, where I used to live when I was with the Cowboys. Uh, so I'm familiar with the league. Uh, and he brings a versatility where he could play outside or inside. Uh, Coach Baccarini calls him one of the most instinctive, uh, smart players that he's ever coached. And uh, the one thing about it, he loves football and he loves Lafayette because uh, he just wants to be a good student as well and, and be the best in every aspect of his life. So he is yeah. a true Lafayette profile kid. Yeah, excellent. And, and you don't see many linebackers, and, and uh, uh, Coach Thompson and I were talking about this earlier, you, you see a lot of linebackers on high school film going downhill, left, right, downhill, those type of things. But you don't see a lot of kids drop into space mm -hmm. and play and understand routes coming from their left and from their right and understanding a feel in the zone. But you got a chance to see, Marco, just do those type of things. Drop into space, find a guy coming into his zone, sit down, read the quarterback's eyes, be in the right position, and then attack the football. You don't see a lot of that. So seeing a kid like that that's long and lean and athletic, he, to me, reminds me of a defensive back in a linebacker body. So you can't have enough of those kids. That, that's a great get. I, that's a kid right now that's going to be on the bus for you, running down on kickoffs and making plays on special teams next year. I mean, great get. Yeah, well, he, he's got the frame to really put on weight as well. He's got, he's got a great build. He's really athletic. Uh, he stays in great shape. And this, this guy, uh, I mean, I don't think he sleeps because he, <laughs> takes, he takes about five honors classes. He's working out for football. Yeah. He's doing well in school. He has a job. Oh. Uh, and, you know, he just is uh, motivated by achievement. Right. And he's a great profile kid and really glad to have him. And when I walked in the door an hour and a half ago, you were on the phone with him. And he was <laughs> laughing and smiling from, the, from the, the hallway with his buddies. He was so excited. So a great get there. Let's move on to Luke Ragone, somewhat of a local linebacker here from Ramapo, High, uh, Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, Ramapo High School, 6'2", 205, a great get as a linebacker. And this was a good football team that went a long way. 
Yeah, that comes from a great program. Uh, your teammates with uh, uh, Mike Hughes that we have on our yep. team. And uh, this guy loves football. Uh, he's versatile, uh, not only productive as a linebacker, but really productive as a running back. As a running back, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's a good combination uh, in looking for recruits, that guys that play those positions, because mm -hmm. they see the same hole, Mike. Yep, you know, li linebackers see it from a defensive point of view. Running backs see the opening uh, from an offensive point of view, and, and he does both. Uh, he's a, a good, smart, tough kid who really impressed in our camp this summer, showed a lot of versatility, and he's uh, physically he's got room to grow, and he's got a lot of potential, so we're really yeah. glad to have him. Great burst, great explosion at the point of attack and deliver. Mm -hmm. And the one play right there where you saw when he set his feet, he dropped his hips. A lot of times kids will lean forward, they bend at the waist, they don't bend at the knees, and you see him drop his hips and then explode, and um, that's good football. And like again, Luke a great get, a big body too, a kid that's probably not done growing as well, and Ramapo High School went a long way this year, so Luke we're going just from an hour and a half away, just a, a great get, and uh, again, another one of those linebackers that you mm -hmm. can't, you just really can't have enough of. Um, let's move on to uh, um, Ketchum High School. We'll talk about Jair Stevens, an outside linebacker here, linebacker slash whatever you want to do with him, six foot three, 215 pounds, just a, a, a monster of a man and, and runs. He played tailback in high school. So tell me a little bit about what you liked about Mr. Stevens here. Well, uh, when you watch the tape, you see him at safety, make plays <laughs> and tackles. You see him intercept the ball. Uh, you see him play linebacker and he makes tackles. Uh, you see him play tight end. Uh, you see him uh, play in the slot. Uh, you see him rush the passer. Uh, so he, he is a guy that uh, has a great physical build that came to our camp and really pre impressed us with his versatility, his strength, his length, uh, and, and a guy that's, that's tough and plays hard. And you know, we really like his versatility and think that he uh, physically is a, a really rare guy. Yeah, absolutely. You don't find many kids like that can play the free safety position at 220 pounds, six foot four. He's explosive. He's fun to watch. He's the best player on the field whenever you watch him. He's got great length, too, mm -hmm. John. That's a big word that we throw around the, these days. Has that length to do that. Um, you know, if he gets much bigger, he might find his hand down in the dirt. <laughs> you know, so maybe he'll stay a little lighter, stay on his feet. But again, a kid that can help you on special teams, do the right things. Um, a good kid, great athlete, great exceptional um, uh, student as well. Catch him high school. Um, that's a really good get. He came again back in December. Mm -hmm. You had him signed up, and uh, um, he was all in for the Lafayette Leopards. A really, really nice, nice player. And again, another linebacker. Well, a needed position, but also a guy that is a strong, fast, and athletic, uh, with some versatility. Right. Uh, can play outside in space as a linebacker, uh, but then also rush the passer on third down as well. Exactly. Um, we're going to turn to uh, Brian Riley right now. Brian just got his paperwork in. Linebacker, six foot two, 205 pounds, out of St. Joe's Metuchen, New Jersey. Uh, again, Hillsborough, New Jersey. A, a, just a good football player. Fierce tackler. Again, good, strong at the point of attack. Reads and diagnosis plays really well, is what I wrote down. Well, this guy loves football, and that's what jumps mm -hmm. off the tape is uh, that no, no matter what he's asked to do, inside linebacker, blitzing, a gap chasing things down. Uh, he, he's by the ball. Uh, he's like a bird dog uh, getting to the ball, slipping blocks, uh, making tackles sideline to sideline. He just loves to play. Uh, and uh, he's a smart kid, comes yep. from a great program. And uh, he just brings wow. a, a, an effort and a relentlessness and a, uh, just an attitude that you just love to have as part yeah. of your defensive team. Yeah, he's a kid that's going to compete and he's going to make seems to me like he's going to make other players around him work a little bit harder. Because mm -hmm. you're going to see a guy like Brian run into the football, doing those type of things. And um, he's, he's a very smart football player. I understand. You could see, you know, when you watch a kid like that, the way he diagnoses, the way he slides left or right, sees motion, sees a guy, mm -hmm. you know, reach back, go from one side to the other. He understands where his fits are, which is so important for a linebacker. And, uh, you know, Brian Riley is a, a really, really nice get and, and does and, and fills a need for you, like you said, with that. So let's move on right now. And we'll go from uh, we, we talked about Jerry Stevens. We'll talk about Tristan Tritt. Very interesting name here. Lawrenceville, New Jersey, Notre Dame High School. Uh, great feet. What I noticed about Tristan and I loved about him, relentless motor. Doesn't stop moving. Reminds me a lot um, of a guy like Malik Cam. Just doesn't stop moving. Well, he's a versatile guy. You'll see that he he plays in a two-point stance as an outside linebacker. Right. He puts his hand down as a defensive end. He's going to provide a lot of versatility. He's big, strong, he's athletic, 
Uh, wow. He never he never stops. Uh, relentless motor, like you said, Mike. Uh, just great pursuit effort, uh, mm -hmm. and that's the mentality you want on defense. But he's got really good size yeah. uh, and and growth potential, and comes from a great family uh, and a great program, and uh, just the way he plays football and the way the love of the game jumps off the the tape, plus his physical skills and potential. Uh, really a great addition to our team. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he, like you said, what I like about him is he can play on his feet and play with his hand down, so you don't know where he's going to end up the size-wise he's going to be. He could be 265 mm -hmm. pounds by the time he's a junior and a senior. Um, comes from a really nice program, plays well. Like I said, r good versatility, good hips, things that are tough to find in bigger kids. I think the defensive line position is the most difficult position to, to recruit. Mm -hmm. Because if they're really, really big and really, really good, you're not getting them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On the other hand, if they're right there where you can kind of almost project mm -hmm. where they're going to be, I think Tristan's that type of kid. He's going to play a lot of football here at Lafayette, really a lot of football. So well, um, we're going to finish up defensively, then we're going to go back to one player offensively. Uh, but let's talk about Damon Washington. Six foot three, 260 pounds, John F. Kennedy High School, Island, New Jersey. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, I just that's all I wrote down. Just great first step, powerful at the point of attack. Well, he's a big, strong, athletic young man who uh, is, is, comes from JFK High School right over here near Newark, uh, New Jersey. And, you know, just the physical dominance uh, on the field in high school uh, really was hard to deal with and hard to block in high school. And just uh, uh, great, great get by our coaches to... Uh, to find him wow. and get him interested in Lafayette mm -hmm. and uh, uh, comes from a really good family and uh, does a lot of things. Wow. He's, he's around the quarterback a lot. <laughs> he's sacking the quarterback I a lot. Uh, he's defeating blocks. Uh, he's big, strong, and tough. And, wow. and for a big guy, he's got great pursuit and effort. Yes. And, and, and boy, does this kid have a smile on his face all the time. <laughs> and he's really excited about being a Lafayette Leopard. Yeah, he does a great job bringing his hips. And again, bending at the waist is so important. The flexibility, unlimited ceiling for a guy like Damon Washington. Great get, again, that position that's so difficult. I mean, I see him, he could, you could line him up in a five. Mm -hmm. You could put him in the, on the nose, get, take on the double team, that type of powerfulness. Um, there's guys up front, defensive line-wise, I think it's going to be somewhat of a strength of your team. You got Breedlove, you got Malik, you got Greenhill, you got Barnett, you got mm -hmm. Ian Grayson coming off of injury. Right. Um, it's a really going to be a nice group, and you, you kind of get a feeling when Damon probably on, on, was on campus that they all kind of got together and said, this is the place for you, and he's going to fit in really, really well. Well, it, it just adds to an uh, already good defensive yeah. line group, and, and we want guys in our program that affect the quarterback. Yeah. You know, obviously the importance of the quarterback position we know, but probably the next best yeah. The most important position is, is those that affect the quarterback, and you do that with a pass rusher. And, and uh, he's a guy that, as an interior defensive lineman, is going to be able to push the pocket and, and get quarterbacks' faces uh, and, and, and be a guy that I think can do it early in his career. Yeah, collapse the pocket is so yeah. important. And if you look at the two games that you talked about earlier, the Bucknell game and the Fordham game, it was about the D-line getting to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. The last play of the game at Bucknell, the play prior to half, Andrew mm -hmm. Chuma makes a great play on a sack. So those plays, when you can shut you know, offenses down from a standpoint of they have to drop back and you can pin your ears back, those two games, the Fordham game and the Bucknell game, were just obviously just uh, impacted so much by the defensive line. So a great point there. Let's finish up. Let's switch back to offense here. We're going to go back to Christopher Webb, Chris Webb, a wide receiver out of Gaithersburg, Maryland. Uh, Quince Orchard, great high school down there. Boy, I'll tell you what, Chris Webb can really tote the rock. He can run. <laughs> Yes, he can. Uh, he's, he's a guy that uh, uh, has really good athleticism. He's a playmaker. Uh, as you can see, he's returning a punt for a touchdown. Yep. He uh, catches the ball from the slot for a touchdown. Uh, he's a guy that uh, uh, you hand him the ball, he scores. Here he is playing some defense. He's an athlete that, that was uh, uh, originally uh, offered and verbally committed to, to UVA. And, right. uh, uh, we were able to, uh, in this second signing period, be wow. able to uh, get him interested in Lafayette, get him on campus, and uh, really create a situation where mm -hmm. uh, this was a great spot for him. I, I think he's a, a really good athlete that shows the versatility of him on defense, but also there's a ton of plays of him uh, with the ball in his hands yep. and catching the ball as a wide receiver. So 
uh, he's going to add some playmaking ability for us. Well, he's the type of kid that took advantage of that. He came, obviously, saw Lafayette, saw the opportunities that he can have here. Um, but again, just great athletic ability in the open field. Like you said, a great student, great family. I mean, just a kid that's going to fit in here really well, and I think he's going to help you. So you look at the, the type of class you had here, obviously seven on a, or eight on offense, seven on defense. You have one kicker. Uh, you're, I know you're not finished yet. <laughs> There's more yeah. kids to come. Um, this is really shaping up to be a nice class. Um, a focus on the linebackers, a focus on the wide receivers. Uh, you got to be really happy with the way this class came together. And I just want to throw a shout out to you and your staff for being patient and understanding how this system has changed mm -hmm. so much. For when I was back here recruiting in the, you know, from 90 to 2000, it was a different game. It really was. Mm -hmm. um, and you had a lot of crossover with different teams. Now, you know, we didn't even touch Texas. We didn't touch Florida. We didn't really touch you know, California, those type of schools, but you're making obviously around Lafayette and very important, but reaching out to those areas that you know are very fruitful. Well, you have to because of the, the academic requirements. Yep. Uh, you have to expand your web and, you know, big, strong, fast, athletic, and the right kind of guy. Those are the parameters that we look for, and uh, we've done that. Uh, this class combined with the one that we brought in before, mm -hmm. uh, when your players on your team yep. come up to you and say, Coach, you know, this is a really good class, uh, it's a it's made up of a bunch of the right kind of guys yep. who are really big strong and fast and we're doing it again this year so uh, we're just adding to the the good players that are already on our team mm -hmm. and uh, we're looking forward to breaking through in 2019 absolutely the camaraderie and everything about this locker room is so exciting to be back here you know everybody out there knows that this is one of my favorite days if not my favorite day of the year the next one will be i looking up on the clock here 209 days away we're playing william and mary mm -hmm. now coach let's quickly talk about that you got 12 games on the schedule now a yeah. bunch of home games in the middle mm -hmm. your thoughts about that real quick before we get out of here well, we just love to play. So whenever they <laughs> allow us to play a game, we're going to do it. So this is one of the years where there's five Saturdays in September. And so the NCAA allows you to yes. play. So uh, we made sure that we were able to uh, play. And we're looking forward to getting it all kicked off and started against, yeah. uh, against the tribe. Well, the weather's good out there. We could actually go out and play a little spring ball right now. I saw a lot of kids working out. Thank you, everybody out there, Lafayette football fans, for joining us. For Signing Day Central, again, thanks to John Garrett, the head football coach of Lafayette College. I'm Mike Joseph for the Lafayette Sports Network. Olivia will be back to wrap things up. But again, hope you enjoyed everything, and stay tuned to GoLeopards.com because Coach Garrett and his staff are not finished yet. Thanks again for joining us. Go Leopards! Welcome back, everyone. And before we wrap things up, we just want to give a quick thank you to the whole staff here at Lafayette College Football for making this show possible. Coach Garrett and his staff have done a great job in making today happen. And if you're interested in watching the broadcast, it will be available in full on YouTube later on today. And we have a couple more updates coming for you guys as well. Season tickets are now on sale, an early bird special that will last until April 30th and retail prices will then begin on May 1st. And then spring football will start soon. We'll have some updates on our social media regarding spring practices and to make sure you guys get out here for the maroon and white game on April 20th. So again, thanks so much for watching and for Coach Garrett, Mike Joseph, I'm Olivia Mulvihill. Thanks so much to our LSN crew. And thanks for watching, happy signing day.